Well, good Sunday morning. It's a good day to just worship our Lord Jesus Christ and remember what he uh, did for us at Calvary. And, you know, we celebrate Palm Sunday and the triumphant ride of Jesus Christ into Jerusalem. And, you know, the beginning of the week of, uh, you know, we would see the preparation for the cross. We would see that during this week, that many of the prophecies would be fulfilled. And, uh, you know, there were ones that were joyful. They were happy to see him, and they cried, Hosanna, Hosanna. You know, uh, and I look today, and and I kind of t- twist this a little bit, not taking anything away from what Jesus did. But, you know, I think today if he was to ride in, uh, you know, to Jerusalem, you would have... You would have the uh, the uh, Jews, you would have the Christians, you know, and, and there would be the Muslims, and there would be, you know, all of these other different religions there. And there would be some that would be, you know, indignant. There would be some that would be cheering and, and just, I mean, just elated about uh, seeing him and, and knowing that he was riding in. Uh, you know, to take and, and fulfill the promise of the prophets and to be able to, you know, to start the journey that would bring our salvation. Uh, but I know that today, uh, as we look at the liberal crowd, as we look at the woke crowd, these would be the ones right here that would be indignant. These would be the ones right here that would say, hey, this guy's pro-life. They would say, this guy right here." You know, he's pro-marriage. This guy right here, you know, he's against everything that we believe in. And, you know, he's the one that would go to the, uh, he would go to the liberal churches and he would just turn them upside down and say, you know what? Uh, it has been, it is written that my father's house shall be called a house of prayer. He said, but you know what? You've made it a den of thieves and robbers. And he says, so with this right here, you know, we cannot have, uh, we cannot have church as usual, uh, you know, trying to uh, create the mega empire, you know, the huge money, million dollar, you know, offerings. And But what he would say is there's sick outside, there's lame outside, there's lepers outside, there's murders outside, there's homosexuals outside, and we want them to come in. We want to be able to give them the good news that is available through the Word of God. And, you know, when I think about Palm Sunday, I just ask, who is it? Who is it that would really praise Him? Who is it that would really rejoice in His presence? Uh, Many churches today don't know what the presence of the Lord is. They won't let Him in. They have to stick to the bulletin. They have to make sure that everything is uh, quote unquote decent and in order. Uh, you know we don't want we don't want anybody to get healed and then run around. You know and as they're running around and rejoicing and praising God, well we can't have that. We can't have the one that you know has has uh, stage four cancer and and you know a tumor completely disappears and they're totally healed and they're they're just screaming and praising. Oh, we can't have that. You know, uh, but I tell you what we can do. I tell you what we can do is we can take up three offerings. We can have a bake sale. We can raise all kind of money, you know, uh, for the different uh, platforms, the different needs that we have. Uh, but let's not get radical. Let's let's not do that, you know. And so I'm just saying that when we look at Palm Sunday, uh, there were. The, there were radicals that were there in Jerusalem that were laying the palms down. They were they were rejoicing. They were singing. They were praising him. And the Sadducees, the Pharisees, all these were, you know, they were indignant. They were just so upset. How can this individual turn this city upside down? How can he bring such joy? You know, we're the ones that we want you to be under our legalistic control. Uh, you got to walk around always looking sad, always looking mad. Uh, you want to you want to be the ones that you know what you have that religious air about you. You can't be over here dancing and praising God and having a glorious time. Well, you know what? It set their mind to destroy him and to take him out. 
because Jesus represented, listen to this, he represented the freedom of speech. He represented the freedom to be able to worship. He represented being able to uh, being able to take and, and witness out in the streets. He represented everything that the woke crowd is against. And that's the reason they sought to destroy him, just like what we're seeing today. If you stand for the joy of the Lord, if you stand saved, if you stand, just tell them the truth. The woke crowd is out to destroy you. And so, think it not strange. Jesus said that the world hates you. But before they hated you, he said they hated me. So I want you to think about that. What is your position with Jesus Christ? What is it today? Oh, you go to church? But I understand this right here. Mice go to church. It doesn't help them any. They don't get saved. Well, you say that's kind of, you know. No, but listen. Going to church don't save you. What saves you is the blood of Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection, and accepting in faith that he has done it for you and that you receive him as your Savior. So we're going to ask that you think about that and just say, Lord Jesus, today I celebrate you openly. I'll celebrate you in the city. I'll celebrate you in the home, family. I'll celebrate you in the school, the colleges. I'll celebrate you wherever I go. And let everybody know, I am a child of the King. Well, God bless you. Get ready to have a great, not service, a great experience today as we go serve our King. God bless you, and we love you.